Hello everybody, Ben Malgus here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to some Toronto Raptors news, Riker. There's been an article posted about how Masai Ujiri and the Toronto Raptors have interviewed young Canadian high school basketball phenom Kareem Mene. Kareem Mene, I believe we're pronouncing that correctly. We've tried to research this a, a lot before the pod, but he, he's a 6'5 point guard, originally born in Senegal, but grew up in Montreal, played for Vanier in Saint Laurent, Quebec. So it's a, he's... He's a really interesting player to look at, Riker, in terms of just raw athleticism, raw ability, and could definitely be an interesting guy going forward. Only 20 years old. What are your thoughts on this sort of news and the potential the Toronto Raptors draft him in this year's upcoming draft? Ben, extremely, extremely interesting as an NBA player and as somebody potentially for the Toronto Raptors. We know what Montreal-based guys are able to do. We just saw Lou Dort explosion in his defense against James Harden in in that playoff series, uh, this series when OKC took the 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 Rockets to Game Seven, that was incredible. We know all about Chris Boucher, another Montreal guy. Um, so there's there's a lot of up and coming Canadian guys um, that play a really good brand of basketball. So I think that that's very promising. Then his size, six five, I think he has a six six or six seven wingspan, one ninety five, like very good size for. That number one spot, maybe he would become a two. It seems like he's a natural point guard, though, um, and a real attack the basket. He's got player comparisons to Drew Holiday. But Ben, specifically fit for the Raptors, he's a guy who doesn't really have a polished jumper technique. It doesn't look broken, but he, he looks like he's still a little while away from cracking a, a serious NBA roster, and that's exactly where the Toronto Raptors development staff love, love to sneak in, snatch these guys up, develop them into amazing uh, undrafted guys that turn into max contract players, Ben. Yeah, for sure. If you just look at the entire roster for the Toronto Raptors, it feels like a lot of these guys, especially the younger ones now, I guess they're not young anymore, but they've, they're all players that have just come up through the development system, whether it be Fred, Siakam, Norman Powell, the, all these different players. And you know, now we have guys like Terrence Davis, Matt Thomas, who are sort of on, on the rise. Paul Watson, who's been in the 905 for a while, and we have high expectations for him coming into next season. But, yeah, we, we want to start this podcast off. We don't expect him to sort of come in and be a superstar right away. And, you know, with these raw sort of draft process, that's that's not what you want from them. Even Fred Van Vliet, he barely played his rookie season. Pascal Siakam was G League MVP his rookie season because he played so many games down there. So it, he would definitely, I think he'd be one or two years of, of work and growth. But having a, a guy play 6'5 at the point guard that could particularly, you know, come into his own when Lowry's on the way out, because we, we think Lowry has a couple more years left in him playing at this high level. And, you know, to have... Because I don't expect him to go high in the draft, despite he's been getting a, a decent amount of press as a, as of late, a Sports Illustrated article, different different interviews and highlights. But he to be able to select him as a project, as a little bit of a risk at the end of the draft, maybe select him undrafted. He would be, he would fall right in the Raptors wheelhouse and types of guys we we love to go after these athletic guys who who play defense because he's known as a as a great defender obviously that height too at the point guard position would be very val- valuable and you know not obviously we'll we'll talk about the reasons he'd be going late in the draft some of his his areas he needs to improve on but you know he's ability to slash his ability to drive his handle looks really tight in all the highlight videos that are out there i think he'd be a really interesting selection for the raptors late second round i think we have the 57th pick this year 58th so it'd be interesting record ben well yeah he could slip down but you're right he's apparently interviewed with 20 nba teams so his name's getting out there on the uh, on the radar of other nba scouts and this is a guy who's not even been to university. He was playing uh, at, what was it, Vanier College or something you said in, mm-hmm. in Montreal. Same so level. it's uh, C, the CJEP schools. I think they're kind of like that intermediary level between finishing high school and going to uni. So this is a guy that, uh, you know, he, he he's, he's maybe going to fly under the radar in terms of how great his potential really is and what he can turn out to be as an NBA guy. Because if you talk about, you know, players like Fred Van Vliet, who really they played on limited minutes and they really took time to develop before coming that guy that really cracked the roster. This guy, he's the polar opposite from Fred, where he's coming in with the ability to attack the paint with ferocity. You look at his highlight reel, you look at his mixtapes on YouTube, not a ton of views went his way, but he's pretty deserving of it because he's got some nasty finishes 
is. He's able to be above the rim. He's got some killer crossovers. It looks like he has a very quick first step bend. Uh, I would say just as an attacking point guard, this guy would be, you know, if, if you can develop the shot and, uh, and maybe figure out how you can get him, you know, the ability to get more polish around his jump shooting in, in, in the NBA – and he's still able to maintain that level of athleticism, he could provide something that the Raptors haven't had in a long time at the point guard position. Yeah, for sure. And obviously being Cana- being growing up in Canada, he he wants to play for the Raptors. He came out and said he had a really good pre-draft interview with, with Toronto, and the idea of playing for the Raptors is really exciting. He loves the development culture and is willing to buy into that sort of situation. He, think he'd, he thinks he'd fit in really well, and that's obviously the first step. You don't want a guy that sort of comes in as a rookie and wants all of the minutes right away, especially when they need a couple of years of development or, or whatnot. But you, you brought it up. The one area where he, he does need to develop that is the three-point jumper. And Every Toronto Raptors point guard has been been able to knock down threes, shoot it at least to a, a certain extent. During all these years, we've been in the playoffs, been a top seed in the Eastern Conference, and I think it's essential in today's NBA to at least have a solid enough set shot, at minimum, from the three-point line if you want to be able to be at least a starter in the league. So, you know, he... And in 2018-2019, shot 37% from three, which is pretty promising, especially from a guy that you know is developing the three-point shot. That's a little bit low for high school for for a super, you know a superstar, which is what he is in high school. But that dropped to just 21% in last season of his of his basketball career. So, you know, we we can't have him shooting 21% from three, manning the point guard spot going forward. And I looked at I looked at the videos. You and I sort of went back and forth on this a little bit before the podcast. I don't think his mechanics are are that bad. I think they do look a little bit smooth. He's definitely a smooth player on the court. He doesn't look like one of those athletic guys that look like they're playing the wrong sport or anything like that. But I think the mechanics are fine from the, the short videos, obviously, we saw. But do you think from the mechanics you saw and just from past of these types of players... Do you think he'd be able to develop that jump shot in one, two seasons? We saw Siakam go from shooting none to, you know, at least at the start of this year, being a, a knockdown three-point guy. Yeah, well, it's a per- it's a perfect point to bring up. It's also funny you mentioned that he doesn't look like a guy that should be playing another sport. He did mention that being from Senegal, it was his original passion, just like Pascal Siakam, that they, they both wanted to play professional soccer, but then a little bit later in their childhood picked up basketball and I guess found a passion for it or figured out they were pretty good at it. But Ben, it's a perfect point to bring up. Is he able to develop his jumper? And well, one, there's a huge difference. If you're only able to shoot in the 20% uh, efficiency from three point at, at the high school distance, because I'm pretty sure that's only 19 and a half to 20 feet um, from the basket. That's, that's the three point line distance. It jumps right up Money to range. about yeah, well, it goes up to 23, 24. So, I mean, this guy's got to put some strength and some finesse onto a shot. But I said at the beginning, Ben, it doesn't look broken. It doesn't look polished, but a shot doesn't look broken like a Lonzo Ball or like a Markel Fultz where you'd have to come in and completely reteach everything from the bi- from the fundamentals, the mechanics, everything. you got to go and, and reset them basically back to ground zero. This guy, to me, my only criticism when I'm looking at his highlight reel is it looks like he draws his hand back and sticks his elbow out too much, you know, as a just a pure shooter, you kind of want to see that 90 degree with your, you know, your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist. You want to have that nice 90 degree angle. He brings it right back to a 45. Just kind of seems like he launches it at the basket, but that's not hard to fix. You know, you're just you're just pulling that forearm out a little bit, Ben. So I don't think I don't think under the right coaching that it would be very difficult, or you know, it would be a stretch to say this guy can improve easily on his three point shot. Yeah, for sure, and. You brought up the player comparisons, Riker, and the the Drew Holidays of the world, the, those really hyper athletic defenders, players. Just from what you saw, and obviously we're running off. We watched a, we spent a good amount of research. We don't, you know, obviously we know about the Raptors and stuff, but we we put a decent amount of watching into this guy. But from the the minimal content you saw on his just highlight tapes, highlight reels, what do you think his ceiling could potentially be, and who would who would sort of be his floor in your opinion? Oh, man. Do you have players in mind if you want to start first? Like, off the top of my head, like, as you said, Drew Holiday. Matt, like, if we could get a Drew Holiday type of player in the undrafted second round territory, that would be a such a steal. I think that could obviously be a best-case scenario type of deal with this guy. Maybe Frank Nilakina would be a, 
a route that is less appealing because I know he's had some Knicks fans love and hate him and they're all over the place with Nil Aquina, but you know, maybe he'll be a raw prospect that never turns out, turns into something. But, you know, the defense, just the quickness, the mobility, the size, he if he can get that jump shot, he is what you'd want to create a point guard out of in a vacuum. You know, if you had a, a, a lab where you could just craft, mold a specific point guard, I think that would be the sort of guy you'd want. So I think it's worth taking a risk on, Riker. I think so, absolutely. And, and again, it comes down to how how interested are other NBA teams? Because if he slips down into that late draft or undrafted situation, I know for a fact that this is a guy that the Raptors would love to sink their teeth into because he offers some tools that I would argue currently the Raptors don't have. They don't have that, you know, athletic, big, attacking point guard to develop. You could say that arguably Terrence Davis could be that guy, but usually the Raptors guards come in a little more polished and a little less athletic and a little undersized. So this would be a nice sort of way to mix it up for the Raptors and develop a guy that could come off and be a, a real attacking threat, Ben. So I love that Drew Drew Holiday comparison because Drew Holiday's been lethal, and this season he was. It seemed like he even elevated his game again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for sure, and... You brought up the second round thing, and you brought up that how this guy's name is being talked about a lot, a lot more. And I know some people see the twenty-one percent from three, and they're like, "Oh, you know, let's stay away from this guy, whatever, whatnot." But you know, there's there's been a lot of chatter. Or his name's been thrown around. We're making a video on it now. But Riker, if his name gets up higher in the draft boards, would you consider taking him with the the 27 28th pick that we have in this year's upcoming draft in the first round well it's interesting because some of the prospects that are floating around now in raptors mania and some and and what it's looking like the the potential picks are going to be available i know that there is a it's a a yale or a stanford one of the ivy leagues a, a standout shooter that seems like he's getting a lot of attention from the Toronto Raptors that might be available. Then there's a guy, Oturu, who I think it's Oturu, who's who's a big, um, who, who's also able to shoot, I'm pretty sure. So it would be the complete polar opposite if, if the Raptors decide to go for a guy that's really a work in progress from the perimeter shooting. But I, I don't know, Ben. I, I would be I would be surprised if he went in the first round just because it seems like the Raptors have consistently struggled when guys can't shoot the three. And what they want to assemble right now is a team that you can have five guys out that can all confidently knock down their shots. You know, so I'd, I I would see probably them picking a guy who's more capable of shooting the three before a guy who's not. Um, but, you know, nothing would shock me, to be honest, Ben. I, do you have a different opinion on that? Yeah, and I, I, I'd agree with you, but... Masai Ujiri has been known that when he sees his guy and he knows they're going up in the draft, that he's willing to reach for them, you know? And we saw that Masai Ujiri's had one of the most phenomenal draft records as a GM drafting guys like OG, Siakam, Norman Powell late in the draft, and Fred Van Vliet is undrafted. We don't have to get into all that. Everyone knows how good Masai Ujiri is, but... You know, probably his worst pick, even though it ended up getting us a G League system, which might have been the most valuable thing. But Bruno, he was a guy that's supposed to go later in the draft. But he, Masai Ujiri, heard that, you know, Bruno could have been selected in the early second round before Masai had those picks or late first round. So he said, you know what? We need our guy. He selected him with the 20th. So if Masai is all in on, on Mane, then. You know, I, I could see him really shaking it up. He's, he's done it in the past. It's definitely possible, Riker. And here's the issue, because I know a ton of people are going to watch the first four and a half, the five and a half minutes of this video and then stop watching it and maybe comment angrily that we didn't mention Bruno Cabloco <laughs> and how bad that that whole situation <laughs> ended up. And they, they'll probably even comment, you know, two years away from being two years away. They'll, those similarities will be shocked if they don't make it to the comment section and Ben it it's a it's a very perfectly valid point to bring up that you risk reaching too low for a guy that's very raw and would take maybe too much time to really develop if you know if you're if there's guys on the board that could maybe come out and be impact impact players immediately but you know what the thing is when you're drafting down in late 20s you know realistically unless you're getting a diamond in the rough, which the Raptors have been able to do very often, to be fair. Um, normally, you, you shouldn't be expecting too much from them anyways. 
Yeah, for sure. I think there's a, a skewed sense of as to what those draft picks can be when we look at what Messiah Jerry's done. And we have even guys now that we don't know what the their potential is. TD, Matt Thomas, Duan Hernandez is a guy a lot of people are hyped about, Paul Watson. So we have... I know, I know. We, I I'm gonna say it's an exciting season coming up, but we we just are coming off years with Kawhi and coming off championships and all that sort of stuff. But I think these under the radar, lesser known players will really be exciting for the Raptors. But let's know what you guys think. Do you go with the Toronto Raptors to draft Kareem Mane, Mane, or do you think we should sort of pass on the projects, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, you're the best to make this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, any last words? Kareem. That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.